So the first challenge is how do we link better our climate policies with competitiveness? The second one is, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll say that very briefly, um, the links between the climate policy and simplification. Simplification is one of the big objectives of the mandate of, uh, of Ms. van der Leyen. Uh, and here we are actually discussing with the European Commission and with a lot of uh, people working with the, with, the, with the platform that works on these issues to make the taxonomy less uh, less difficult to implement and, and, more, and more readable. Uh, the taxonomy in itself is a great asset for Europe because it means that for investors, you see that everybody speaks the same language, which is extremely important when you are dealing with the Green Deal and you want to avoid greenwashing. But it has become very, very complex, and that's one of the elements that we are working on currently uh, in support of the European uh, Commission. And the last one is the links between our climate policies and the market feedback we get about what is the most efficient. And what is the most efficient? For example, we, we've, we have financed a lot of, uh, of offshore uh, wind farms in Europe. And what we heard was that actually what banks were looking for was less this kind of financing, but more of guarantees. That's what we are doing. We have developed now an instrument to give counter guarantees to banks who are guaranteeing uh, these this projects of, uh, of offshore wind farms. And actually, that's what we try to, uh, try to develop over the, over, the, over the years, risk sharing with, uh, with private sector uh, investment. I will close here with one word of concern that I heard in, uh, in New York as well. Um, what I heard in New York was big concerns about bilateral development aid, and that figures of bilateral development aid are down sharply. And it's not a surprise when you are in Europe because you listen to what is happening in, in European countries. Uh, it was more a surprise to me that apparently countries like China also are putting their uh, bilateral aid down. And there are two risks, one of them associated with climate that I would like to mention in finishing. The first risk is of course that that will be at the expense of the poorest countries. That uh, bilateral development financial institutions will continue financing countries like emerging markets and much less countries that are poorer because you cannot finance a very poor country if you don't have a grant element associated with it. And the second thing is, I fear is going to come at the expense of adaptation. You know that climate action is, com is composed of mitigation and adaptation. Adaptation is much more complex, difficult, uh, we do that more and more in our projects, but it is in particular the case that adaptation content is very strong in poor countries. You know, adaptation is what do we do with climate change when it is already there, not that we try to reduce the increase in, uh, in, 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 in temperature, that we have to deal with the phenomenon that where every 10, 20, 30 years that come now every year. That requires a lot of uh, money, and this money often in poor countries comes in the forms of grants. If bilateral aid is down, I fear that the first victim will be adaptation. So we need to, uh, to pay great attention to, uh, to this when, when we put in place our, uh, our European policies. So I'll stop there, um, and I, I hope that uh, the message of uh, relative optimism is, is, uh, is the right one and, and well received. Thank you.